So today is one of those days. Working hard on a problem I made myself. Now, the car I'm working on today is my 2010 Corolla. Unfortunately, it's been badly hail damaged and then was poorly fixed by someone. I bought this vehicle knowing that full well and I hoped that the paint job would last. Now, unfortunately, you can see I've already dirt back this once and the results weren't great, uh, to be honest with you. I'll flip this around so you can kind of take a look. It was really uneven and I believe the issue was partially the weather. It was kind of hot out, so I think everything got tacky pretty quick. And the texture, this uh, rubberized texture that's mixed in, clumped up a little bit on the ends of my roller. And rather than picking that off or scraping that off, I decided to just kind of merge it and roll it and it caused these thicker areas. So I did buy another quart and I'm going to see if putting that on heavy a third time will actually help even some of this rough finish out. So if it doesn't work, I don't know, I probably won't add any more to this video, but this is a start. So I'm basically educating you on what not to do. Okay, so I just did my very first third coat on the hood and I just wanted to give you a glimpse. It's actually thick but even. I use the nine inch roller and obviously I'm just doing rough. I'm not getting super close to the edges or anything this time. Um, but it looks decent right now. And what I've been doing, I just literally poured it on there and then just kind of massaged it around with the ruler. Um, obviously this is kind of a final coat uh, attempt. I'm gonna shoot for the roof, or, roof again. Uh, I wasn't happy with the way the roof and the hood looked. Uh, I know the lighting's all over the place, but hopefully you're getting the gist of what I'm saying. Um, let's shoot for the roof, see how that turns out. I've used about, I would say, maybe almost a third of a quart so far. I'm gonna see if I can get at least the roof done and maybe the driver's side, I'll probably end up having to buy some more. But that's how it goes with paint jobs.
Now, if you do happen to drip a little bit of Duraback, um, I found WD-40, a little bit of WD-40 on a rag. That takes it off really quick. Just want to get to it when it's wet, obviously. So if you choose to do this to your car, um, some areas you're going to notice immediately are going to be your door handles and then down right below the driver's side door, you might have a tendency of catching your leg on these rough little bumps. So don't say I didn't warn you. Now my final tip for you would be if you're nearing the end of your can, maybe focus on some of the trim spots tight areas just because it is going to clump up a little bit more and I would say shoot for the small spots where maybe you can finesse it out just a bit more than a larger area where nitpicky bumps and clumps will show up in daylight. So on the website it talks about using a brush and it basically says you don't paint you kind of lay the dura back in and that is exactly what I'm showing here now something to remember when you're doing tight spaces like this remember that you are in control of the texture so if you see it starting to pile up just do your best to keep it even if you care about the finish now as you can see I haven't taped anything off this is just eyeballing everything on there and if I do happen to get some drips I do recommend a microfiber towel with a little bit of WD-40 that'll get rid of any drips or excess that rolls onto your trim. So I can tell you right now the results that I'm seeing so far this method is looking like it works and it's something that I could recommend to you. Now I'm going to show you what I was doing the first time and try and illustrate what I did wrong and show you the tech I was, technique I was using that was incorrect. So first things first, I was using the small roller. It, I'm not saying you can't use a small roller, especially for areas where it's uh, kind of tight, but on larger areas where you care about the finish, um, definitely switch to a larger nine inch roller. Um, what I haven't done this time, you can actually see there isn't any uh, rubber um, pieces or anything collecting around the end. When I did this the first time, I was putting enough pressure where the particles were gathering here on the outside and I basically rubbed the end, tried to massage them into the, the existing Duraback and that didn't really work and I got those clumps that I showed you earlier. Now, I would say pressure like this where you're actually pushing down, trying to like skimp and save is not what you wanna do. You don't wanna be skimping with this stuff. I know it's expensive already. It's like $150 a gallon, but if you do care, I put that in heavy quotes, uh, if it's a junker car that you wanna make it you know, look a little nicer, um, or if you're making your truck a little bit more waterproof or rustproof, definitely plan on more as opposed to less. After doing this now, I would say for a car like this, accounting for mistakes and drips and spills, I would get probably a gallon and a half I think that's what they recommend for a Jeep on their website, but I decided to do my old Corolla here and I'm liking how it's turning out better this time. Now that the job's all over, I did have a couple pointers that I wanted to leave with you. First things first, make sure you have plenty of ventilation. Uh, the stuff smells pretty strong um, and you want at least your garage door open so you get some fresh air coming through there. I don't necessarily think you need a respirator or anything fancy, um, but having that airflow is important. Secondly, make sure you have a drop cloth. Um, 
it is pretty hard to get Duramac off of a concrete floor if it falls onto the garage floor. Uh, it's not impossible to get off, but you will need a uh, paint removal tool, like one of those attachments that are for drills, and I'll include a picture of one of those uh, in the video as well. Um, just spray a little water and use that to scrub away any Duramac that happens to land on your floor. Something else too I wanted to mention is if you happen to have less than a third of a can left in say, maybe like a gallon, make sure you transfer it over to a smaller container. Don't just seal the top and hope everything works out. Uh, the moisture in the air will allow the Duraback to create kind of a, a scab or a surface inside the can. And if you do punch through that and just mix it all together, you'll find that you get a little bit of a difference in your coloration. So don't just let it sit in the can if you think you might need touch-ups later down the road. Transfer it over to a separate container and then go from there. All in all, this is a fun project. Um, I can say I definitely turned some heads in parking lots or driving down the road. And it is what it is. I, I picked uh, dark blue as the color. The original color of the car was blue but I was just tired of having bits of paint uh, flying off the car uh, from a poor Bondo job. So uh, I would say three months in, it's a success. I've had no peeling or issues thus far. In hindsight, uh, you will see early on, um, I was like, yeah, I'll just eyeball this on there. If you want it to look a little bit uh, more professional, uh, definitely use some tape. Um, I did use a little bit of electrical tape around the rear lights of my Corolla. That was nice because it actually saved me from having to tear multiple pieces of like blue painters tape. The electrical tape you can actually stretch and mold. So if you're only using just a little bit of tape, electrical tape might work fine for you. Uh, thanks again for watching my videos. I do appreciate all the likes and comments I get. Uh, it's awesome to see people engaging and having fun and trying projects like this. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoy the content and enjoy the rest of your day.